Okay, that's rolling. Now we just put some background music on. Oh, right on some blood out, guys. Hey guys, welcome to Tactical Perspective. It's me, Krusty Old Pro. It's Saturday, March second. It's been a it's been a hot minute since I did that live stream. Thanks very much for everybody that showed up to that. Whether you just fit it in and said hey, or fit it in and didn't say anything, I appreciated seeing that number go up past one. <laughs> I really did. It was awesome. And uh, guys, I uh, it's a dad joke for your pro, guys. I uh, I have videos that I have to get to. I have projects that I am going to. That's why I took a couple hours off uh, between the live and this was so that I could uh, I could line up my day and tomorrow with projects. And uh, if you guys watch that live stream, I, I have some apologies. I won't call them apologies. I have an after action review for that, but uh, that'll be another at the end of this video, let's say, because this one's a tactical perspective. This one is about the eel to which I, um, this was a, uh, this was an awesome arrangement that uh, was given, it was like, I was blessed, blessed by uh, Digital Diarrhea in that he wanted to hook me up. Uh, and, 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 and he, he, he sent me this package and he was like, uh, yeah, we worked it all out and the eel was in it. And, um, you know, the Crimson Guard that he sent me, he couldn't send me the box or anything like that. I told him that's all good. We were trying to, you know, keep this simple. <laughs> but the eel was one where he couldn't send me the box, but, and I can't believe I failed to grab it before the, I started showing here. Uh, I do have the box art and the case. Uh, for the weapons that he did provide, right? So, uh, number 81 in the series, mm -mm, there we go, Cobra Eel. I do have that box art for him as well. And all the kit and everything was there. It was just, it was easier. With everything he sent, I understand now completely why. Why would you waste more space with box uh, and endure those shipping fees for a piece of cardboard that half the Joe collectors out there they can go without, especially when it comes to get such a hard to achieve figure as uh, the Cobra Eel, guys. So before I before I pull them down and before we do that head to toe review, you know how this goes on the tactical perspective. I gotta I gotta walk in, walk the troops on target here, and uh, and talk about the, this eel. Um, as he appeared to us back in the day, but before I do, uh, let's go back and just cover off uh, some digital renders we got for the retro series for Joe, because it's 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 relevant because the real the eel is in there, right? So that makes it relevant. Ma -ah, ma -ah -ah. All right, so you guys, if you're following the channel, um, you know how I feel about beachhead, right? And uh, yeah, retro is going to give us a beachhead, and it's a fine looking beachhead, right? Uh, but very modernized vest. I notice uh, the seventy-five on his patch. That's cool. He's got his uh, his he's got every piece of loadout you can ask for. Some of fireflies, some of snake eyes, uh, a little bit of scarlet. Uh, you know, good to go figure. It's not the classified one. It's not the it's not the red beret original, is it? But it's a good beachhead. Uh, I'll, I'll add them to my collection. I do have my pre-order in, right? Uh, my pre-orders are all in for this stuff, thankfully. Um, yay. Finally, I, I finally can stay current with the collection. This last year has just been about me trying to get caught up on all the ones I missed, man. It was an expensive friggin' year for a new collector, I'll tell you that. Um, but... You know, you sell up a hockey card collection to start. That's what you do. Uh, so we also are expecting the snow serpent. Sorry, guys. Just try to angle it so the light. Uh, maybe I'll just angle the light. There we go. Uh, the snow serpent for the retro wave. For those of us who missed out on the original classified one, which I did. I had it in my hand. I thought I could come back for it. I could not. Uh, but there's my second attempt at that. And uh, yeah, a little bit of color change, but uh, and definitely not as much kit as what was contained in that deluxe set, Snow Serpent. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably have another opportunity somewhere down the line to order that. I'm sure they're not done printing those. Hasbro, you better not be. You sons of... Anyways, uh, definitely good for troop builders. Like, it's a good year for troop builders. The theme... 
for the year, if you look at the ferret driver in that tactical gray, which I know Aaron is excited, Aaron the toy enhancer will be excited about given, given some of the things he's talked about lately for his projects, uh, that's gonna fit just beautifully in with his plans, I'm sure. Uh, but that ferret, great design. But if you'll notice the theme of this wave for that is basically, um, the, for the digital renders, is that the face sculptor, like I said, He's, t he's, he's on vacation or he's walked, right? Because it's all masked figures, no bare flesh uh, faces, right? Uh, and then of course we have our retro eel. For those who were like me, and thanks again to Digital Diarrhea, I now get to remove myself from this category of people that, uh, that did not manage to get one of these when they were initially released. And for whatever reason, this is the figure that becomes the the uh the rarity right and i don't understand how that works uh but yes we're gonna get a, re a retro version you'll have your swing at the cat to troop build those eels and if you have one then you, maybe you'll have more now and another troop builder and another faceless troop builder <laughs> um but yes here we are we're talking about this eel though the one that maybe you saw in passing and didn't have the time to get and then lost it like i did uh Again, I had no, no foresight thinking that this was going to suddenly be the hot item of its release, but it was. This thing did not sit on a peg for more than a minute, and uh, unbelievably so. So number 81, the Cobra, Cobra Eel, he shares the same packaging thematics as the, uh, the Torpedo release, uh, 70, 73 in the line. And I only know that because that's the year the crow was born. Right, uh, but uh, yeah, the the figure itself is just a beautiful display of the the perfect enemy frogman. A hundred percent. I, I can't, even just looking at it when it was uh, when we didn't even have it yet, and we were seeing images of it. That's all I could think of. Is I was like, man, that looks like the perfect enemy frogman. And I think what it was was that helmet was what was dealing. You know, like anything other than that helmet was going to look just like Torpedo, I felt like. And, uh, you know, paint his chest red. But if you didn't do that helmet right, he was going to be Torpedo. And, you know, um, the images that we saw, they did some amazing photography over at Hasbro like they always do. And they want us to picture the potential of these characters in our, in our shelves and in our displays. And we all ad hoc as best we can, right? Some of us uh, try to make a YouTube channel about how we display them sometimes, and uh, others are happy with a shelf display. But either way, I, uh, you know, uh, just quick nod to the original 80s design there. Either way, guys, no matter how you display them, I wonder what's the accumulative time you spend just standing and staring in awe at your classified collection, right? So the Cobra Frogman, before I grab the figure and we go do the head to toe on it, uh, just a quick review of that old 80s file card. You know, that's just as much of a personal part of this for me. And it says that uh, their code name are eels. Their file names are classified. Primary military specialty is underwater demolitions. Secondary military specialty is marine engineering. Uh, just a funny note on that, guys. When uh, when I was a teenager, I was a really strong swimmer and I did competitive swimming for a little while. I was not the top of a competitive swimmer chain. I was just a strong swimmer. Um, but my uncle and aunt were in the Air Force they knew they knew somebody who knew the career managers and uh that you know certain trades were looking for people and uh strong swimmers were always kind of pushed towards the navy's other trades uh, where they didn't have to worry about it so much so like hull technician was open and a hull technician would fall under marine engineering these are the guys that would weld uh seams or do hull repair underwater or in dry dock and things like that on top of learning demolitions and clearance and all that other stuff uh as i understood it anyways uh but i was 17 when uh my uncle arranged for me to get my foot in the door for that and i said no and i wish i had never said no to that that would have been a very high paying high gratifying high risk high reward kind of job anyways um they're from various countries and they're all e4 uh or equivalent so what what is that in the u.s sergeants and up 
Okay. Uh, Eels are the underwater demolition specialists of the Cobra Legions. They man and operate the Cobra Marine outposts and disguised as offshore drilling rigs and augment the crews of larger Cobra naval vessels. Eels undergo a rigorous two-part training program in the warm shark and pirate-infested waters of the Cayman Islands in the Caribbean and in the frigid depths of the North Atlantic. Their training regime includes marine structural engineering, explosive ordnance, underwater fighting techniques, and marine geology. Okay, first off, quick shout out to, uh, to JLS Comics, <laughs> who were on Punk With Toys there on Thursday, I believe it was. Yeah, I believe, yeah. Uh, anyways, JLS was, talk was talking about uh, the pace of having to talk fast. Somebody had said, maybe you should slow down in your videos. And I was, I was right there with JLS going, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? But there's a lot to cram in and you only have so much time, right? People's attention spans are being stretched out and you have to deliver the info. And JLS does it for guys that have, characters that have been around for decades and decades and decades. The same 20 minutes as he would do for a character that's only been around for, say, a, a couple of years. Right? He's very talented. I like that guy, man. I love listening to him all day sometimes. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, you know, I, I, I totally understood that problem right away. Because I will feel the pressure to talk fast a lot sometimes if I'm trying to cram in too much. All right, so there's your Cobra Eel. Let's go over and have a look at him. Uh, where is he? Oh, no, he's not on the right display. Where did I put him? Up here. Oh, shoot. He's right next to that like, share, subscribe sign. I keep pushing on people. Oh, crow. Uh, yeah, no, it's important, guys. And uh, like I said, it's that algorithm. I'm trying to grow this channel, to do the giveaways, to just make this a fun place to be. Like I said, uh, you won't see me ever trying to, to push anything other than just good-hearted fun. I will be naming other youtube content creators you could be interested in left and right uh i have i call him my sponsor but i have a really good uh thing going with loki war two three now he's been very generous to this channel and we're trying to get him a lot of business as much as we can uh so definitely check out model misfits 1138 but no we're not officially like it's just one of those things right but i need those likes uh for the algorithm and to share this and all that other stuff so that uh, my videos start showing up in other Joe related videos, okay? Or Cobra, uh, things like that, okay? Or conversion videos for that matter. Anyways, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look because you guys know I do the head to toe inspection, but uh, I won't talk about the 350 contest. It's, uh, it's something that's there, we're getting close. You have to go back and find out about the 350 contest. And I left it really easy. Just scroll down my videos and eventually you'll see me holding up a sign that says, basically this one enter here anyways uh hey look at this if you watched my live stream today you'll see that uh a little while ago and i've been holding it for the live stream i got myself a ninja turtle playset at a ridiculous 749 canadian uh it's it is incomplete and there is breaks in it i have not done the internet dive on this thing but it uh, it's glorious because it has so much potential. I, I can't decide what I'm doing with it, guys. I'm either gonna make it a make it an HQ like a bat cave, or I might have an assault scene, or who knows. But uh, but this is where I've decided I'm gonna do the review of the Cobra Eel. So we're gonna we're gonna get right in close to that, and I am going to focus on the eel, of course. Sorry, guys, I gotta move this whole thing closer. Oh, was that my head? Probably. The crow, right? There's a reason he only just now got up to 300, which is a good pace for me. It's actually a little bit uh, overwhelming that that pace picked up the way it did after I started doing conversions. It was nice. Uh, but, guys, like I said, I am a one take guy. I am a relax. Let's chill. Grab your coffee. Let's just chill for a minute and not act like everything has to be such a formality but with the sacrifice of that is it's also me pretending like i don't have to learn video editing and other shit which i apologize for today uh that live i did not know that i had to order or download um a stream content um buffer kind of thing it's an extra program Streamyard, i believe it's called to help put that chat on the screen guys uh i was trying to do my best to get stay on top of the chat but i couldn't figure out like it showed up while i was recording on my screen 
but I couldn't figure out uh, that you guys could, weren't going to be able to see that in the later, like the replay of the video. So that's going to be important that I get that downloaded for the next live, which will be after I come back from England. So you're looking at a minimum, uh, probably a week or a bit. All right. So this eel, the number 20, or number 81, again, so happy I have this in my collection because of the rarity and the frustration of having missed that opportunity and the necessity I felt of having a Neil in my collection while I play with my lights here. Sorry, guys. Um, I thought it was a brilliant sculpt, but like I said, it came so close to just being uh, too torpedo-like in my eyes. And the kit loadout didn't really help me feel any different about that but how would it you know he needs his flippers a spear gun is one of the one of the weapons synonymous with a diver of so you need that right and of course you need that dive knife which uh you know right there a beautiful little dive knife everything like that so let's talk about that head to toe really quick you'll notice i've got his um helmet or his underwater breathing apparatus as it were sitting there underneath the the backpack hung down low okay by this time we know what it looks like through the photos of it on there there's a reason i put it down there out of the way for right now it's not the smartest reason or the most brilliant it's actually just lazy crow appeal okay so there's your head sculpt sorry i'm getting a message while i'm filming there's your head sculpt and it's your typical sinister look in his face, similar to what we see on the on the Cobra Infantry designs under those bell clavas. This eye print is serious and dangerous and threatening looking. And, uh, it, 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 you know, you got to give them credit where credit is due, guys. Uh, to put an expression in a diameter that is in millimeters, uh, a workspace of millimeters, to be able to put a clear expression to denote serious or calm or laughing or anything like that there there's a skill and they've got it they've got it in spades i love their their hooded figures just because it's not just your normal stunned look eyes no expression there's always something at play in those heads uh but yeah what i why i left that helmet down guys and i'll and i'll just i'm gonna pull it off the breather right now and, and show it to you is because it slips over that head clearly um, and you know that because you can see my happy fingernail behind there, behind that clear glass. But in order for me to do that right now, I'm going to have to turn on a hair dryer. It is a tight, snug fit. Um, and you know, it's almost better to take the head off, put the head inside and then do it, uh, after soaking it in hot water or taking a hair dryer to it, like I said, because I am very concerned about damaging for some reason, doing any kind of rub on that black that, that causes any kind of wear or damage on something. Um, you know, I'm not a multi-poser kind of guy. I'm a put it on the shelf. Some characters you move around from shelf to shelf or display to display or you take them down, look at them longer. And some, you're fine with them just being back there looking sick and cool, right? And that's what this guy is for me. He is fine looking back there sick and cool. Now, that can absolutely change once I get some retro wheels. Um, if I if I get around to getting retro wheels, that's the thing about these waves when they start coming up at high paces, right? And you're trying to be res you know responsible, keep your wife from breathing down your neck about how much money you're spending on your hobby, which I now call you know my passion for sure. If I have a channel about it, um, these waves risk disrupting that i'm going to switch over to the back a bit just uh to show you guys the backpack he's got that uh breather apparatus with that extra bottom piece that if i was watching when i was watching another guy talk about this uh this attachment is what is missing off the bottom of torpedoes back bottom piece um where he has that available slot where it seems something should mount it is this piece uh i thought that was just to mount maybe flippers and it failed or if it was for the spear gun, I was like, ah, it's kind of not the best fit. 
having that explained to me that it was this uh, nozzle jet propulsion or whatever system uh, made a lot more sense. So I was happy to get that uh, explanation given to us. But that graphic, what do we got on that graphic? It's just your standard eel wrapped around a naval anchor with a skull on the top, right? Dropping down the depths, right? Just like the eels dropping down to kill off uh, Joes invading into their waters, seeking out their territories. Uh, the arm articulation is uh, what you would expect, guys. With, uh, sorry, I haven't run a hairdryer over him. He's still a bit stiff because he's so damn new and he flew from California, apparently. Uh, but, um, sorry, I'm getting him knocked off this, uh, this stand here a lot. But, you know, the nice thing about the diver figures in general is that much like with Marvel Legends as a line, you're able to stay away and do a bear, 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 uh, body. Yeah, and by bear, I mean, you can put seam lines, you can put uh, accessories on, but you're not having a big honking chest rig, huge shoulder flashes, elbow pads, shoulder pads, knee pads, uh, huge boots, all these other things that can ev be eventually manipulate or, uh, or detrimentally affect that articulation that you want, with, especially with a guy swimming. You want him to be able to get into crunch ball poses. And, you know, you want those knees up to that chest for a good cannonball, uh, things like that, right? So you, you know that going in with the diver figures. Now, the 60th anniversary gives you a lot more to add on. And, uh, of course, once these hit Canada, I, of course, will definitely have at least one of them on my pre-order. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of kit ads Cobra can steal out of that Joe set while, you know, still be, being a Joe set. Um, but that's the thing. I always kind of felt like, you know, it's great we have all the Joe 60th anniversary stuff coming. But what's keeping them from doing 60th anniversary Cobra? You know, like... Honestly, like the same categories, pilots, uh, you know, an infantry of sorts, a naval of sorts, an air force of sorts, and a marine of sorts. You have Cobra characters that could fit that bill, or you could make them. Why not? Uh, so the legs, you know, he's got that weight belt. Um, I that was the one thing I think I, I, let me go grab my torpedo for a second. I said I didn't, I purposely left torpedo out of it. Because it seems like at some point most guys want to bring Torpedo into these videos um, and do the comparison. And I get it now because there is always a question. And that's the thing, right? Like uh, they got different belt loadouts between them and clearly different placement. But Torpedo came with more weights on his leg. He came with weight belts. I'm assuming that's weights, right? Uh, and... There should be weight belts on these guys to help keep them at depth. Unless I'm wrong, guys, I'm not dive qualified. I never did go get my scuba. I have scuba dived, uh, or, or like just as a class, and uh, I've snorkeled and stuff like that. But as I understand it, weight belts are are pretty um, pretty handy when you're diving. <laughs> uh, and there, of course, is that back piece I was talking about, that little slit at the bottom of his pack where the tank the the attachment is missing from that so uh that's i think all i need out of him uh the legs again great print um these leg prints right the other reason why it's a damn shame this figure is such a rarity this guy would make an amazing like uh, operative or trooper uh if you were to just put some boots down here Right, put some boots. You could make him like a ninja or like a lightweight assaulter. Uh, change this this uh, slip piece around the crotch to just pants. And this general flat, detailed, uh, almost detailed less, but uh, dry fit look could work well. And uh, that's what I'm going to be looking for at the retro line. But again, you know, I'm going to be... The only figures I sacrifice, guys, are things I get doubles of uh, because they're on clearance or broken toys or figures that I look at and I'm like, no, I've replaced this with a better variant. 
and I don't really want this on the same shelf, that's when I do it. To go out of my way to buy a bunch of veals just to do conversions is too reckless. Um, unless, again, like I said, you get them at clearance prices, like you guys down in the States in your $5.99 sales at Ollie's and Ross's, which in Canada, we don't get that close. We really don't. Not with classified. I think the cheapest I've ever picked up a classified new in box has been the $20 mark, and that was a while ago on a Snake Eyes Origins, like under under 20 for Snake Eyes Origins, but above 15. And then, um, yeah, after that, it's all, you know, 25, higher, usually. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. That is the eel, and of course, for Kit, he comes, uh, he's got, just like uh, Torpedo, he's got a wrist attachment, but it doesn't flip around, it's hard set into that wrist, which I like. Uh, I like Torpedoes, I like that it can flip around, but we don't need to repaint, uh, reprint that same thing uh, when you've got an ankle dive knife that is going to do slippage. Two pieces of slippage kit, it's kind of frustrating when you get it in your hands. Uh, the spear gun, you know, it's that common representation of the, the bendy weapons issues. Spear gun, I knew would have that, but you know what? It didn't come warped, it came well. I was happy with the spear gun. I expected the spear gun uh, anyway, so no big deal. And he doesn't come with much else, right? So again, I kind of wonder why was he so hard to obtain? Sorry, he does come with his flippers and we can put those flippers on or we can leave them off. I'm gonna put him back on his base and I'm gonna let him not get eaten by Fiona as he stands there on this new display. And I'm gonna go over that play grade for a second and that tack grade as I close this out. So a play grade for a Cobra eel. You know, um, I'm sorry, I gotta approach this as the child at heart that I am, guys. A play grade for the Cobra Eel, same as a Torpedo, I think is very high. I would have to go A+, and I don't remember if that's what I gave Torpedo. And if I didn't, maybe I didn't see it at the same time. I am going to look at these figures with the heart of a child. I really am, okay? Uh, or a photographer, and just say, you know, when you were like eight or nine, you had your bathtub toys and you knew Torpedo was in there. You saw it. maybe even eel, wetsuit, a lamprey or two. Don't tell me it wasn't like that. If you were under, if you were under 11, when these things were three and a quarter inch and new in the eighties, you had bathtub or pool or beach toys. And these guys were in it. And you can't tell me you didn't have a time in your life near water with the, the line if they were designed for water. And the, the original action figures back in the 80s for the eel and torpedo were very much like that. They came with the same kit. They were good to go for water play. Um, I'm, I'm using that same candle to light the room with here. Guys, from a child's heart, this is an A plus play, uh, play factor. Enough said, right? The only thing I would change, if anything, is I might have widened the insert of the helmet so you could put that on a little bit more easily onto his head. But yeah, no, heart of a child, A plus. Uh, tactical, yeah, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him an A minus on the tactical, just because one of the things, um, you know, one of the things, yeah, I wish they had done is updated his weapon stock a little bit and like Torpedo, Torpedo got a weapon for once he hit the shore and was on the ground that would protect him. And the, the eel seems to be lacking that. Um, and even then, Torpedo's weapon, what I would have liked to have seen is, uh, is uh, a, a waterproofing attachment over the barrel of his SMG that he comes with. <coughs> I would have wanted the same thing, pardon me, for an eel. If you're going to give these divers uh, firearms with bolt action, gas operated weapons please give them some sort of waterproofing uh look like a a condom over the barrel or or a wrap around a gun that's strapped around their back and then you know then you have the real gun without the wrap as a secondary uh accessory or something but uh something and i'm not a diver guy uh but i you know i have done waterborne assaults and things like that and yeah What's he do when he hits the ground and uh, he has to take the objective? That spear gun, it's uh, it's not ideal. Anyways, guys, that's it for the tactical perspective, that uh, play grade A and all that other stuff. Thank you again, Digital Diarrhea, for allowing me to uh, 
work this out with you so that this guy comes back and like i said uh you know i really appreciate the uh the conversations we've had and uh the understandings and the discussion and moreover just your time and just um thank you so much for taking such an interest in my channel uh digital diarrhea and uh you know, I keep please keep putting the photography up. Send me some pics that I can show on the show that <coughs> that you'd want thrown in uh, because I think people should see your work. And uh, definitely thanks again for recognizing the characters I didn't have, like the Crimson Alley Viper and this uh, gorgeous Cobra Eel. I'm so glad that you uh, you reached out. And guys, that'll sum that one up for today. I am going to get back to painting so I can finish up a few more customs before I head off to England. So that's what the rest of the day is. And also a little bit of background work. Uh, again, on the uh, live video, thank you so much for showing up this morning. I'm sorry it was all botched. Uh, I don't know what happened, but when I went to go, you know, it said your live happens in three, two, one. And then it's like, yeah, your live is going on. I'm like, where do you hit record? That's why you saw me bump the chat over to the new site i said go find i'm streaming right now uh thankfully i had two devices that allow me to do that next time if it happens again i'll just put the link to the new chat in the old chat if you guys are in the waiting room and uh hopefully i won't even sort have to do that i am gonna get the chat stuff sorted out so if you do miss one of my uh lives in the future you will be able to see the chat and you guys can recap things that you said or that were said to each other uh especially I feel bad because some of you guys in the chat were having really good side discussions, getting to know each other. And now I've taken that away from you. And that's where I feel guilty for not being prepared. So I do want to fix that. All right. Uh, you know, it's been a fun ride, guys. It's only going to get more fun from here. 300, 300 plus subscribers. And I'm going to 350 for that contest. But guys, there's no cap. Uh, I just want to have fun. I want to talk to other like-minded individuals. I want to talk about Joe. I want to talk about guys like the Cobra Eel and what made them what they were for this line and why, you know, why, just why sometimes. That's all. That's all it is. And I want to enjoy all this with you. I'll see you soon on the next Tactical Perspective or TCCC.